White, integrative psychotherapist, making videos on topics that I love while wearing my favorite sparkly, silly tops. Today's, today's topic is slightly more serious than typical because I'm actually coming from a place of a lot of frustration in making this video today. I just had it up to here with folks on social media encouraging others to diagnose people as narcissistic or worse, having narcissistic personality disorder. Now, caveat here before you come after me, I think it's wonderful that in the last five to 10 years, the topic of trauma, the topic of abuse, the topic of resolving trauma, healing, identifying personality disorders has become more layperson friendly and there's more information out there for us to identify these dysfunctional patterns and hopefully seek to address them in ourselves and in the dynamics in our lives. Overall, that's a fantastic thing. However, it's gone way too far, and I'm going to explain what I mean. While labels can help us have structures for understanding patterns of behavior, they ultimately come from a very paternalistic and pathologizing paradigm, three P's in a row, um, where we make people all one way to fit into a diagnostic category. And what that does is it over identifies a human being as a symptom set instead of the fullness of a very rich and diverse human experience that makes up every single person, regardless of how damaging, dangerous or harmful their behavior may be. And there's a reason that I am a licensed clinical social worker and didn't go into psychiatry or psychology and all due respect to my colleagues who have those degrees and are in those professions, but social work tends, and it has many flaws, <laughs> uh, there's nothing perfect about social work practice, but it tends to under-pathologize, under diagnosis, and focuses on what we call person and environment. So we look at the totality of systems that people come in, including family systems, gender, cultural, geographical issues, religious influences, etc., over smacking a label on someone's behavior. So let me explain more about why I believe really strongly we need to stop just calling people narcissists, even when we have really harmful experiences with people. For one, besides labeling and reducing people down, when we do that, we encourage the divisiveness that is absolutely overwrought in our culture right now. You know it, I know it. It is us and them me versus you, the good versus the bad, that side of the aisle versus the other side of the aisle, that country versus this country. And the media has done a fantastic job of encouraging that divide, as in my opinion, have politicians on both sides of the aisle to incite hatred, quite honestly. That's what division is. It's saying I am right and you are wrong fundamentally. And we all know that life is a lot more nuanced nuance than that. There's a lot more gray areas than there are black and white. And the last thing we need right now is for more of us to slap diagnostic, including mental health providers, in my opinion, slapping diagnostic labels, particularly if you're not a licensed mental health provider or clinician of some kind with a lot of training and a lot of background in trauma work. I'll explain in a second why that's important. It's really, really important that we not go around deciding that we know the characterological nature of other people in our environment, because all that does is drive a wedge further from understanding and compassion. And that is what's going to end these wars. I'm not trying to get political here, but we cannot have a more peaceful world that we all seek. We all basically want our kids to be happy and healthy. We want to afford health care. We want to have a safe home to live in. We want to be able to get education at a reasonable price. We want to be able to enjoy time with our families. We want to be able to communicate and contribute in meaningful spiritual communities. These commonalities are almost universal across humankind, in my opinion. So when we start talking about these mental health diagnoses, I think we get further and further from bringing together what I would call unity consciousness, from increasing the level of consciousness that would 
help us understand that we are more alike than different. And that is how we're going to get through these crazy times that we're in. Another thing that the rise of social media, narcissism channels, and conversations about diagnosing people can be so dangerous in the times that we live in is it actually includes the overdiagnosis and underdiagnosis by healthcare professionals because we too get swept up in trends. And what I want you to know is that when it comes to narcissistic personality disorder as defined in the DSM, there's my big Bible. Uh, here's my little shorthand version um, that I use that has all my questions in it. This thing kind of sucks, okay? Most of us that have been mental health professionals for decades as I have, this is like mm, written by people that aren't necessarily practicing with folks day in, day out, and it falls short. It used to hyperpathologize all kinds of things, including being gay, which is almost universally accepted as not a choice or a mental health disorder. So, you know, this, eh, it talks about one kind of narcissism in there, what we call grandiose narcissism in there. And there are a small percentage of people that meet that criteria and can behave in ways that are really, really harmful and damaging. There's also at least seven other kinds of narcissistic tendencies, behaviors, patterns that we would call narcissistic personality disorder that don't fall in the DSM, but are very empirically validated. And I'll list some links below to books if you want to read about that stuff. I mean, behind me, don't get me wrong, are lots of books on narcissism, narcissistic family systems, and a variety of other personality disorders that as a mental health professional, I am really, you know, beholden to understanding and being an expert on if I'm going to be um, effective in my field. However, that doesn't mean that those labels are the sole lens through which we can best help heal people and understand even our own experience and thrive. Absolutely not. So some mental health professionals don't even know about those other kinds of diagnoses, other kinds of ways of thinking about narcissism. And the overemphasis of one kind of narcissism might help people not understand what other kind of dynamic they're in that's really dangerous or abusive for them because it doesn't fit the standard textbook definitions. I'm not going to get into all those kinds. You can read the books below, but covert narcissism is one good example. I myself have fallen prey to being in those kinds of dynamics because they are really easy to miss. And perhaps if you want me to do a whole video on covert narcissism, I certainly can. But the whole purpose here is to get away from talking about those labels and understand how when we put people in chunks of good or bad, we don't speak to the real issue at hand. The real issue at hand is extreme emotional immaturity and adaptive coping behavior as a result of extreme abuse or neglect. That's how NPD and all the personality disorders come about. And these adaptive coping strategies are simply protective mechanisms that people develop, usually at a very young age, to cope with overwhelming feelings of shame and fears of inadequacy, period. That's where they all stem from. Now, I'm not saying that excuses anyone's terrible behavior. I myself, from childhood and into adulthood, have been in close, intimate relationships with caregivers and partners and friends that have some of these characteristics or all of them and have survived a lot of you know negative experiences in those. So I'm going to be the last person to say that we should excuse that behavior because we know what causes it. In fact, that's what makes a lot of us vulnerable to being with folks that struggle with these patterns is because we have compassion for understanding that those folks are good people underneath all of that oftentimes. However, if we can see that there's a reason that this person has adapted that coping strategy, we can make it way less personal and get clear on actually what is our role in the situation. What we do need to do instead is increase our ability to call out behavior that is crossing our boundaries, harmful to us, doesn't honor us, doesn't acknowledge our feelings, our thoughts, and our needs. And I'm talking about any relationship. Maybe this is your boss, your friend, your partner, your parent, your sister. And identify when we don't feel seen, heard, and understood, and therefore get really clear on what our own needs are and what we are going to do. 
if we communicate those clearly and they're still still not met. I'm really concerned that we are raising an entire generation of armchair pop psychologists who basically are getting in the habit of blaming others for their lives going astray <laughs> instead of recognizing that we have a choice in many, not all, obviously our parents are one, at least as children, are the relationships that we engage in. And can we learn a lot about what is abusive behavior, what is possibly narcissistic abusive behavior, what is manipulation, what is coercion? And can that help us make better choices? Absolutely, yes. However, what is really most effective and empowering for us as individuals is to, one, trust ourselves. Trust ourselves when we feel like something is off in a dynamic and speak up. It's really hard for those of us who were made to feel crazy in childhood, especially if we were raised in a narcissistic family system. However, we're gonna take our power back by identifying when that ick feeling, when that crazy feeling, when that what is wrong with me, why is this always my fault and the dynamic is happening and speak up. We wanna identify the thinking patterns and the behaviors that do work for us and teach people how to treat us by setting very clear boundaries. Next, we need to believe people when they show us who they are in the beginning of any relational dynamic, or certainly within this first three to six months, because people who are really wounded from their past can change markedly in their behavior throughout a relationship. We need to trust that people's psychological and characterological makeup and behaviors are complex. They can't be reduced just down to a word or a label or any diagnostic category. And it's not up to us to try to figure out or reason with people why they're behaving the way they are. It's simply our job to accept the reality and decide what we are going to do. And you can still have empathy for emotionally injured people and have love and respect for yourself. Then we need to focus on why we have chosen, if we're in one of those dynamics where it's really a choice, even in adulthood with a parent, to engage with someone who might be having narcissistic tendencies in their thinking or their behavior, or any other personality disorder for that regard. What is it on us in us? that is drawn to this person or keeps hanging into the relationship. And that's not to blame ourselves, but simply to take accountability and control where we can, because we can't do it out there. We can only do it here. So if you have empathy or compassion for people, you're probably gonna have to unwind why you might have been, and I'm in this category too, why we might be drawn to fixing, rescuing, and saving people who are really, really injured and perhaps are not yet on a healing journey. And they may not have, well, they may have varying degrees of willingness or capacity to do so. And again, that's not up to us. We can say what we need, we can observe the consequences of that expression, and then we can accept the reality and determine what we wanna do next. That's it. So that means having very clear boundaries for ourselves. What also is needed is simply to identify this person is behaving in ways that are protecting them and harming me. And if I expose, if I choose to expose myself any further, I'm, or try to figure out or change them, I'm gonna suffer, I'm gonna be injured, and taking it personally is just gonna make all those things worse. So you may be wondering, what is the solution then? So if, if I'm not supposed to be labeling people and I'm supposed to be figuring out just what behaviors work and don't work for me, what's, what's, what will I tolerate and what will I not? What are my boundaries? How can I see my own part in contributing to this dynamic and not accepting this person for they, who they are? What is the final real solution to these dynamics? Rather than worrying about if someone meets some diagnostic criteria that Honestly, in 100 years, this will probably be burned and we'll toss it out and none of it will be relevant because it's a very fluid, imperfect, as I mentioned before, um, instrument. The solution is love. The solution is always, always, always love. I love myself way too much to tolerate painful, dismissive, or abusive situations on any level. And I see that person in pain and in need of love through their behavior, which I will offer to them through my clear holding of boundaries. Because I'm telling you, there is nothing more loving than boundaries. Boundaries are loving and kind. 
When I hear you speak to me that way, this is what I will do. There's a whole host of ways people talk about responding to narcissism. And generally, cons the consensus is to pull back all energy. I'm not going to go into more of those details today because I recognize that that's not always even possible to do, particularly if you have children with someone who has narcissistic tendencies or any other personality disorder. However, it is possible to say, I love myself and I lovingly will not allow this person to cross my boundaries. I won't allow X, Y, Z, and this is what I'm going to do instead. When we come from a place of love, we recognize that everyone is on their own soul's evolutionary journey. Some people are here, unfortunately, I believe, to be extraordinarily wounded and not heal in this lifetime. That is the reality as a psychotherapist I've had to accept. And it's a bitter pill to swallow because we don't get into those professions not wanting to fix, rescue, and save our fair share of people typically as well. That's something I've had to work on in myself. But some people are. They do have some willingness. They do have some capacity. It's not up to us to determine. It's up to us to focus on our own willingness and capacity to heal the patterns in ourselves. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know what your thoughts are on the proliferation of armchair diagnosis of personality disorders on social media and elsewhere, and what else you'd like me to address. Until next time, may you be happy, may you be safe, may you be well. Bye for now.